Hey everyone, so we're going to set up an automation on Fiverr that is going to search for some sort of service and then it is going to get all of these profiles and once it pulls all of the profiles, we're going to click contact me and uh, message this user something. So um, this is going to be two different automations because of the way things are set up and because we don't support um, the nested loop at this time, which you guys can upvote in the roadmap. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scrape a list of all of these URLs to the profile, and then we're gonna have another automation that loops through um, that list of URLs, and then it performs some sort of messaging. So we'll start this automation. Um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and add, um, I'm going to log in with cookies. So what we're going to do is a little bit funkier. We've already done this in other tutorials, but we're going to go ahead and grab the, click the cookie icon here, um, click this export icon, and then we can close our Chrome browser. Then we have the Chromium window open now um, because we opened the guided builder. I'm going to go ahead and paste fiverr.com here. And since we don't have a way to add cookies in the guided builder, I'm going to click I'm done really quick and then add my cookies, which we copied earlier. Um, again, if you haven't seen that tutorial, we have one on cookies. Uh, you're pretty much just clicking that cookie icon, clicking that um, copy icon and pasting those down here. So we're going to go ahead and continue recording now that we have the cookies logged. Um, this is going to help us automatically log in so that we don't need to record those uh, email and password steps. Then let's go ahead and record a search of, let's say, a website. If you're doing this just one time, like if you just want to scrape web designers one single time, um, you can 100% skip recording these steps. Let me finish typing this. But um, the way I like setting automations up, I always think about setting them up in a way that's going to be reusable in the future. I'll probably click outside here. Um, and what that means for me is I expect that I'm gonna trigger this automation to be um, triggered via like a webhook or a different app. And whatever I type is gonna be a variable instead of uh, just being this text. What that does is that allows me to like set up a form on my website and when someone pays $29 and submits that form, it sends the details of that form to this automation which then you know produces what they paid for. So that's kind of the way I'm building these automations. If you just wanna scrape one time, um, you can scrape, you can skip um, a couple of these steps. But let's go ahead and test that click works on that search bar. Everything is good. Um, and this is where we're going to scrape from. So if you're just scraping one time, make this URL after you did your search, the starting URL, and then don't add the type or the click step because you're not trying to do any searches. So what we'll do is we'll click the plus icon, then scrape list. And we will, I guess we can get the ads. Um, let's just get everybody. These are going to be a repeat somewhere, probably at the top. So I'm just going to get everybody instead. Let's go ahead and click the names. That looks like it got quite a bit. It looks like we need to use that scroll down step. And nope, never mind, it's pagination. Okay, that was a lot of scrolling. Okay, um, so that got us the name. Let's go ahead and duplicate this column, which should give us the links as well. So scrape links. So that gives us, you can see, uh, we have, I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm not going to butcher that. Um, and then we have the link to that profile. And you'll see this is different for each user. Um, it got us pretty much everything that we need. Uh, I guess we can also grab the, I guess, the base price of that user um, or their rating, whatever we want to do, right? I don't know. Let's get their, uh, let's get their ratings. So now we have how many five stars they have, or I guess how many ratings they have, and the uh, star rating. Um, this would be a good, a good use case for like using parse. So let's say you want to message this user. You could parse how many reviews they have and say like, oh, I saw you had, you know, parse step blank reviews um, in your message. So anyways, on to the rest of this automation. That gave us everything that we need. We see it created three steps for us. One scraping the name, one scraping the link, and then one scraping the reviews. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna push all of this data to a Google Sheet that I forgot to get ready. Give me one second. Okay, so we have a Google Sheet uh, name, URL, rating, the things we're looking to scrape, 
and we want to send all of these scraped results to this Google Sheet. So I'll paste the URL here, select the input sheet, and that all looks correct. Then the last step um, is let's actually add a uh, let's add a delay here to allow a little bit of time for those results to load. I think it looked like we might want to add like at least a couple seconds here. Um, but what this will do is this will run through this list. Actually, I'll just play it while I describe. It'll go to Fiverr, type website designer, click that search icon, um, wait a second, and then it's going to scrape the data that we want. And again, this is where we can, maybe I'll set this up later, we can connect this data to another app, another trigger, uh, Google Sheet, whatever we want to bring in some extra data, make this a little bit more dynamic and uh, make this run behind the scenes instead of something that you just click play steps for. So we should see in the logs here, we'll be able to see how many results it gets. Um, I think it had 48 while we were recording too, so everything there looks good. And then it will close that window when it is done. Let me get Loom out of the way. And we will see all of the results are here and in our Google Sheet. So next step is to loop through all of these uh, results and we want to send a message whoops, to that person. So let's set up another automation and we're gonna do the same thing with our cookies. Let's uh, start a recording and then we can actually make our first URL be one of these ones from the Google Sheet. Let's do this. And then let's add our cookies again. I'll be back in one second. All right, cookies are added. Let's continue recording. If you guys missed the cookie part, it was a little bit earlier in the video when we set up the first automation, um, or there should be a link in the description. And what this does is this opens me up to this freelancer. Um, and we are gonna click contact, and then uh, I'm not gonna actually send a message, but that would be the last step is to record the send message button. So now that we have the profile open, this is eventually gonna be a variable um, from our Google Sheet. What we'll do is, is click the plus icon, click record, click, and then let's record the contact me button, and then let's click that, and then let's record a type step, of hello from task magic this is going to get changed and then instead of clicking the send message button i'm going to click the close icon um, but in your guys's use case obviously click send message so then what we'll do is let's set up our trigger um, we are going to bring this data in from a loop from google sheets we want this data here so let's say we want to set up data paste the sheet select the input sheet and then say looks good. And then let's do just like five profiles at a time. Maybe we wanna run like five messages every hour. I don't know what we wanna do. And then we are going to replace this URL with the one from the Google Sheet. And I guess this is gonna be, yeah, this will be the same message. Um, and we are gonna loop from step one to step four because for every profile we wanna repeat all of those steps. So we'll see it go through the first five URLs. I'll probably just pause um, after the first one so we can see how that works. Um, so it's gonna open to whatever the first URL is because we pulled in the first five. Click contact me, type our message, and then click this close icon. I guess I didn't realize there was a close. You can record this if you want. Obviously, you guys are going to be clicking the send message, so it doesn't really matter. And then it'll be moving on to the next person in the list. We can see how that list works here. And um, nothing is being scraped, so we didn't really need that output tab. Um, we would if we wanted to scrape something. Let's say that we wanted to like scrape you know, their uh, last delivery. I don't know. Then we could put that in the sheet as well. But let me know how you guys uh, use this video, if this helps you with some things. Hopefully you guys can see how we can work around the whole nested idea and scrape a list of things and then do something uh, for each URL. All right, I'm adding some of this as like a extra info stuff since I kind of teased the parse during the video. Um, I'm not gonna run this and I'll kind of skim through this stuff a little bit faster. Um, but let's say that we wanted, let's say that we were like marketing, um, you know, services to get people reviews or get their Fiverr profile in a better standing, whatever it is. 
So I can add a parse step here. And what I want to do is I want to parse the rating. I have an example of what it is. I just pasted that from my Google sheet here. And let's say that what we want to do is if they have less than 20 ratings, uh, we want to do one thing. If they have more, we want to do another thing. So I'm going to go ahead and split this at the uh, parentheses, and then we're going to grab this result. And then let's add another parse step using step four, uh, oops, step three, which is the one that we just had. And this is going to get something like this. So let's split at this and grab the first result. Then we can add a filter of whatever this result is getting. So the step four, the, the second parse step, um, if it's greater than, well, I don't know what I said. So I think I said 20. Um, if it's greater than 20, then skip to, then we can continue. If not, then let's skip. We're going to change this. Um, so what we want to do, we're parsing this. This is going to get like a number, like 20, for example, um, or 85. Then we want to send this message. Hello from Task Magic. You have good ratings. Then otherwise, uh, we'll skip to step seven, which is, let's duplicate this. Oops, that went in the wrong order. Um, you have bad ratings. Then what we need to do is we need to make sure that we don't type both of these. So we need to add another filter here that's saying if step four is greater than, it's kind of a, I guess it's a duplicate. Let's duplicate this again. And that bug added it in the right step, I think. Did it? That's my empty filter. So if step four is greater than 20, then continue. Otherwise, step seven, which is checking, actually it can go to step eight, straight to the type step. If step four is greater than 20, then we want to skip to step nine. Otherwise, continue. Otherwise, it doesn't matter, actually. Um, it's impossible. So that doesn't really matter. Okay, so just to recap, because I know that I went through this a little fast, um, our loop needs to be all the way to the end. I'll explain this a little bit more. I'm not going to run through this. You guys can add and play with this however you please. But we have our ratings here. And what we want to do is we want to get um, what this number is, the amount of ratings they have. So like this person would get, you have good ratings, you have good ratings, you have bad ratings, you have good ratings, you have bad, you have bad, etc. right? What we're doing is we have two parse steps, one that's parsing at the first parenthesis and the next that's parsing at the second. Um, you could also use like parse here and then extract number, whatever you want to do, different ways to go about this. Then we're having a filter that says, if this step is greater than 20, continue, which means you have good ratings. Otherwise, go to step eight, which means you have bad ratings. But if it continues here and says you have good ratings, we need to make sure it doesn't send this message. Usually this is broken up into a tree where like, can I drag this? So it'd be like something like kind of over here, um, but we don't have it set up that way. Probably a future thing that we'll add. Um, but anyways, we need to make sure that if it's typing this message, we skip this message and go straight to the close button. So a little bit extra of how you can use parse and filter to add some cool logic here and kind of run a marketing campaign, let's say. But let me know in the comments, I don't know if I did an outro in the last video, but let me know in the comments what you guys build with this, what you guys uh, use this to do and things like that.